Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, friends of the Arctic, you've asked me to talk about the question of how non-Arctic states see the opportunities in the Arctic and for the Arctic. Before I go on, please allow me to briefly tell you about Bremen because this answers the question of why we are committed to issues of the Arctic. The German federal state of Bremen is one of the three so-called city-states in Germany and consists of the two cities of Bremen and Bremerhaven. Bremen is the smallest of the 16 German federal states with approximately 700,000 inhabitants. Bremen is one of the most important industrial locations in Germany, for example, with the largest Mercedes plant in the world where about 400,000 cars are produced per year also the famous Beck's beer is brewed in Bremen. Bremen is one of the main centers of the European space industry and also for maritime research. Bremen has a unique science and research expertise from space to deep sea. This alone results in a large number of direct connections on the subject of future developments in the Arctic. I will go into more details and examples later on. Another central focus of the Bremen economy was and is and remains the maritime industry. We have a long tradition in the trade and shipping industry dating back centuries. Our container port is one of the largest in Europe and Bremerhaven is a leading distribution platform for automotive logistics with more than two million cars handled annually. We are a center for the European offshore wind industry with a focus on industrial production, heavy cargo logistics, and science. Whether it comes to environmental protection or economic development, if you want to work towards a good future of the Arctic, you need scientific as well as maritime expertise. Bremen offers both. Therefore, we confidently consider ourselves as a partner of a good and sustainable development in the Arctic, and that is the reason why we are here. You asked this panel, how do non-Arctic states see opportunities in the Arctic and for the Arctic? Well, in 2013, Germany has presented for the first time ever the guidelines for its Arctic policy. The European Union, in which three Arctic states are also represented, has put Arctic policy to the top of the political agenda. We all know very well climate change will significantly change this part of the world with effects on many other areas of the world. And we also know if one wants to control the risks as well as the opportunities of in inherent changes that global warming will bring, one has to act with a great amount of responsibility for the sensitive environment of the Arctic. The Arctic does not tolerate a gold rush. The Arctic needs a balance between use and preservation. The Arctic needs a responsible handling of the abundant resources and first and foremost, the Arctic needs a greater knowledge base. Therefore, the Federal Republic of Germany has launched its own research framework program, which outlines have been very much influenced by one institution the Alfred Wegener Institute in Bremerhaven. Yes, as you might suspect, the institute is named after the famous German meteorologist and polar explorer Alfred Wegener, who was killed in 1930 on the last of his three expeditions to Greenland. The Alfred Wegener Institute is an internationally recognized center of polar and marine research active in the Arctic as well as in the Antarctic. With approximately 1,100 employees, it coordinates the German polar research. The expertise of the RV ranges from the atmosphere to the bottom of the seas. At Alfred Wegener Institute, bio, geo, and climate scientists work closely together. As a backbone of the field observations, the RV operates several research vessels, research aircraft, and research stations in the Arctic and Antarctic. All of them are also made available to the national and international scientific community. The international ambassador of the German polar research is the research icebreaker Polarstern. The ship has just returned from Antarctica last week. 
Currently, the construction of a new vessel is promoted, which will be put into service in 2020. The research on polar and marine regions is also associated with the development of technological innovations. The RV also accompanies and carries out research for companies. This technology transfer of new products and services is meant to support the sustainable development in the Arctic. On behalf of the EU Commission, the AVI will carry out the strategic management for a network of 17 countries regarding the European polar research until 2020. One thing is quite clear. The AVI plays a prominent role in the research for the, future, for the development of the Arctic region. Professor Sauter, who kindly accompanies me and my delegation here to NUC, will certainly be more than happy to tell us more details about current research projects. This brief portrait of AVI shows that the Arctic may benefit from the involvement of non-Arctic states, and thus this was also an answer to the second question that you have asked. How do Arctic states benefit from further inclusion of non-Arctic states in Arctic networks for development? For this, I would like to tell you about another concrete example of our cooperation. Increasing temperatures and longer frost-free periods are resulting in less sea ice. This development is taking place much quicker than originally anticipated and projected some years ago. This not only grants access to new deposits of raw materials, but to new opportunities for the trade and shipping industry, which will benefit from attractive possibilities via Arctic shipping routes. Our partners and friends in Iceland have recognized early on the potential of a new port built in the northeastern part of the Iceland. The port management company of Bremen, Bremen Ports, was asked to execute first feasibility studies for the construct construction of such a port. Over the past three years, studies have been conducted with the involvement of Bremen Ports to discover not only if the construction of a harbor would be feasible, but also if highest standards for environmental protection and ecological sustainability can be fulfilled. 3D models have been developed, soil examinations have been conducted, weather stations have been established, and historical weather data has been analyzed. The managing director of Bremen Ports is present here today and would be happy to tell you more details about this. The results of the studies have been conducted so far are pointing in one direction. Yes, the fjord is suitable for such a comprehensive and demanding harbor project. After this conference, I will travel from Greenland to Iceland to sign a memorandum of understanding with the government of the Republic of Iceland and the two municipalities which are involved in the project to further promote the development of a deep water port and adjacent industrial area at Finnafjord. We want to build up a development agency to summarize the results of the technical studies, to develop an investment plan and tender concessions in order to win potential investors for the project. Ladies and gentlemen, not only in Iceland, but also in Bremen, there has been a very critical discussion about the Finafort project. I've been asked, does the participation in such projects not contribute to the eventual destruction of the Arctic as we know it today? My answer is no. On the contrary, if the inevitable effects of climate change should take place in an agreeable way, then the economic development needs to be designed properly to meet those requirements. Using the example of Fina Fjord, our answer is to use 100% renewable energy for the establishment and future operation of support. Only in such a way will it be possible for non-Arctic states to meet our responsibility for sustainable development in the Arctic. Coming from the smallest of the 16 German federal states, we want to make important contributions for a good future of the Arctic. Thank you very much for your attention.